What's going on Lego Maniacs? It's Ty, the Lego guy here, and welcome to episode 17 of Ty's Talks. This one had some great questions, including why are there weapons back here? This actually coincides with one of your guys' questions, so it should get interesting, along with uh, the most perfect year of Lego, and uh, what was maybe the worst Lego space theme, among a bunch of other good questions you guys had. And again, if you guys have questions for next Ty's Talks, just leave them in the comments and we'll get to them in episode 18. Uh, but enough talk, let's get right into it. And our first number of questions come to us from Broxy, and he asks, Worst non-juniors pirate ship, favorite MCU character, finest addition to your collection, and last but not least, favorite the complete Sega level. Okay, so you have a number of good ones here. Uh, as far as the worst pirate ship, I'd have to say it's the 6250. We actually talked about it in the last episode, and it's not a terrible pirate ship. It's just, just it, there's just so many good pirate ships, and it just doesn't make the cut to fall into, you know, the best. As far as my favorite MCU character, it's probably Thor. My favorite uh, complete Sega ep like mission is Darth Vader. The reason why is because if you're playing that two player, you can actually have, well, at the end of the level, the two you can fight. So one of you is Obi-Wan and the other one's Anakin. I really enjoyed doing that. I played that with my sister uh, a bunch growing up. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. And as far as the finest addition to my collection is probably the Super Star Destroyer that I have. I think that is the most expensive set that I own. And uh, there's other sets that maybe compete for it, but I think that one takes the cake. And our next question comes to us from WGJL. And he asks, what is your favorite sitcom? So I'm with you on this. You said one of your favorites is The Office. My favorite sitcom easily is The Office. Absolutely love it. Been through, been through The Office probably 15 times. Most of the time it's in the background, but it's just something I really like having just playing. Like it's just, I get a kick out of it every time. And it's definitely my favorite sitcom. And our next question comes to us from Alpha Bricks channel and he asks, how do you manage to have a full-time job, but still upload videos cons consistently? So, good question. Uh, it basically requires a lot of discipline, and I absolutely love Lego, as you guys probably can see from you know me having a Lego channel. So that obviously helps the motivation as well. Basically, how my schedule goes is Sunday, Monday, I'll film. So Sunday, I'll be able to film. Uh, besides the live stream, I'll be able to film after and before. And then on Monday after work, I'll film as well. Then on Tuesday, Wednesday, that's generally my editing days. So that kind of helps. And then as far as I, if I ever get exhausted, which you mentioned later, I do sometimes, if that ever happens, just take a day's break. Don't do YouTube. Maybe if I was going to edit Wednesday, just do it Thursday. And again, what really motivates anyone with a YouTube channel is if they really love what they're talking about, that's gonna help with the motivation, which is gonna help with you not feeling exhausted. Uh, anyways, that's how I kind of do it. And fortunately it works for me. Uh, yeah, I basically would just recommend if you guys ever have a YouTube channel, just make sure you're doing something you really, really enjoy. And our next question comes to us from JH and he asks, if you could design a wave of Western sets in 1997 as a kind of follow-up wave to the OG Western wave, which sets would you choose to best complement the original wave? Great question. Guys, I love the Western theme. In case you didn't know, I think it was phenomenal. And as far as the sets, I think that would work really well. Probably a saloon. I understand why Lego doesn't make a saloon. It is a little off color, but I think if they made it maybe tame, it could work and it would work great you know, with the Wild West sets. And the other set would probably be a train. I have no idea why they didn't make a working train locomotive for the Wild West theme. That was kind of one of the main sets that we had in the 90s or main themes was trains. And we had all kinds of different trains as well. So probably a Wild West locomotive and the saloon, those would be my two top choices. I just think they'd really add a lot to the uh, Wild West sets. And uh, I think they just would look great together. And our next question comes to us from Jawa, and he asks, when do you think LEGO will make a clone trooper helmet set? This is a really good question, and it actually has something else to do with it. If the Republic gunship that's coming out in sometime this year, if that set does well, the UCS one, I think this will help LEGO understand that there is actually a lot of appeal for Clone Wars sets that are made for adults. And if that happens, I could definitely see them do a clone trooper helmet, 
but it really depends on sets like that set. Uh, because if, if it doesn't do well, they might never make a clone trooper helmet. But if sets like the UCS gunship that we're getting, uh, maybe some other ones in the future that we may get, if those sets do well sales wise, Lego will think, okay, you know what? Adults like Clone Wars 2, which they should know, but they'll definitely know, okay, adults like Clone Wars 2, and uh, we should try and make more adult geared sets. Anyways, that's the best way I can answer that. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I think that if those types of sets like the Republic Gunship do well, it definitely gives a Clone Trooper helmet a good chance of happening. And our next question comes to us from WGJL, and he asks, what is your favorite vintage Lego set? So originally I would have said like the El Dorado Fortress, which is a phenomenal set, or the uh, 6090, you know, Knight's Castle. Those are both great sets, but I've actually recently found a contender. It's the Imperial Trading Post. That set looks like it's bigger than the El Dorado Fortress, and you get a whole bunch of different ships with it. That may, may be my favorite vintage set. There's other ones that come to mind, like the Temple of Anubis, Fort Legorado, but it may be that set, we'll see. Hopefully I can able to get it. It's very expensive, but uh, yeah, that may be my favorite vintage set as of now. And our next question comes to us from Hugo El Hugo, and uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Hugo. And he asks, what do you think was a good or almost perfect year for Lego? Okay, so I, I threw around some years, but I basically came out with 2011. I think that that was the perfect Lego year. That's when the Imperial flagship came out. They also had the uh, Super Star Destroyer on the shelves. They had a castle theme that was going on, which was actually pretty good. There were some awesome sets that came out of that castle theme. And yeah, I mean, they had pirates. Basically, they had pirates, Star Wars, and castle. And that just makes me happy. You can't get much better than that. I think Lord of the Rings came out a little bit later, 2012, but that was just a really good year. And I'm probably gonna go with 2011. There's some other ones, but 2011 was very, very strong. And our next question comes to us from Mr. Blue. And he asks, Ty, when did you start collecting Lego? What is your favorite theme of Lego? So good questions. Uh, I started collecting Lego when I was three, if you wanna call it that. They're really just, you know, gifts, sets that my parents bought me and I played with them. but. I started getting real Lego sets when I was around three and I absolutely love them. That's where it all started. And uh, as far as my favorite theme, if I'm answering it loosely, it's Lego system. I've said that before. That's all the 80s and 90s sets. So uh, city, pirates, adventurers, castle, space, they all fell under Lego system. But if I'm ac answering it more proper, uh, Star Wars. I just think the sets are phenomenal. I love the movies and uh, yeah, it's just an overall great theme. And our next question comes to us from Imran, and he asks, Since you are a big fan of LEGO Space themes, I was wondering what is your overall opinion on all LEGO Space themes released after 2000? Mars Mission, Space Police, etc. And how you think they compare to the older ones you grew up with? Okay, so Mars Mission and Life on Mars were amazing themes. I think they were just as good as the 90s space themes. As far as the last Space Police, I thought it was good, but I thought it was a little bit too gimmicky. Like, all the aliens had molded heads. I would have preferred that some of them had maybe, you know, what they did back in the UFO theme where they had a minifig head with an alien print on it along with a helmet. I think that would look phenomenal. And I felt that they were a little bit too colorful as well. But all, overall, I thought it was still pretty good, just not quite as good as the 90s uh, space themes. And this leads me just to say basically that I really hope LEGO returns to space. I think it would be great and uh, hopefully it's something we get in the near future. And our next question comes to us from Gaelic Operator, and he asks, if you worked at LEGO, what set from LEGO Pirates would you remake? I'm probably gonna go with the Imperial Trading Post. I'm high up on that set right now, and I think they could do a phenomenal job at it. I don't think they really have to change much, but definitely I think some of the pieces we have would improve it, and I just think overall it would be a really, really cool set for LEGO to remake. And we have an interesting question from Strange Hermit Crab. He asks, what's your favorite space sub theme from 1989 to 1998? So from Futuron to Insectoids. I had to think about this. This was hard, but you know the theme I'm gonna go with is probably Futuron. I might be triggering some people by saying that. I still think it was a good space theme. It's just, I think that it's not quite as good as like Insectoids, UFO, Roboforce. I think that they were just a little bit more updated and a little bit more clean looking. 
I feel that they really perfected Futuron with Blacktron. I think that those sets were just incredible looking. Um, yeah, so I'm probably gonna go with Futuron. It pains me, but I think that that maybe is the, maybe is the worst space theme out of all those. Not that it's bad, it's still out of one out of 10, it's an eight. It's just the other ones were nines and tens, and uh, it's really hard to compete with that. And our next question comes to us from Ninja Ozzy, and he asks, if you could make one set, what would it be? It can be from any theme and only you can have it or you can give it to the community. So I'd probably go with the Geonosian Arena. I've been wanting a set like that for years and I know a number of other Star Wars fans have wanted that set as well. And as far as if I'd give it to myself at the community, I'd probably give it to the community. However, hopefully some of those in the community sell those pieces so that I'd be able to buy them and maybe build a mock out of it. Like just because those orange, dark orange pieces are really difficult to get. And uh, yeah, that I think it would bring the prices down along with giving us a lot more different pieces in that color. Uh, I know I'm loosely answering it, but that's my answer. And uh, yeah, I just think that would be a phenomenal set. And we have a number of questions from Matt Gaming. The first one we've actually already answered, but uh, we're gonna answer the other ones. He asks, do you like guest streams or casual streams more? What set do you want the most? And if you could only have one set, what would it be? And finally, when is Ty the Gaming Guy coming? So as far as guest streams or casual streams, I like them both. They're just both different. I think it's good to have a solo stream so you could pay attention more to the comments. And a guest stream is always fun to have people on. I really don't prefer one or the other, but I definitely want both. As far as uh, what set do I want the most? Probably the most Icely Cantina right now because it's always sold out. Uh, if I could have only one set, what would it be? Probably, I don't know, I, I can't answer that. There's just too many good sets out there. It's like almost impossible. And uh, Ty the Gaming Guy, I really hope to give that to you guys soon. It's just, I've been so busy with work and everything. Hopefully one of these days I'm able to actually get that going, but if that's to happen, YouTube almost has to be my main job and then maybe I can fit, on, fit, it, fit in another type of channel. It's just, uh, it's really difficult <laughs> right now to go and be able to fit that as well. And our next question comes to us from Strange Hermit Crab. And this one's interesting. We're gonna get into why these weapons are right here. He asks, would you rather lose all your Lego or have Mr. Blobby spontaneously appear in your house at 12 a.m. at night? You guys don't know who this is. I didn't know who it was. He's one of the freakiest characters ever. And I thought initially, yeah, I'd rather not have my Lego and then I wouldn't have to deal with Mr. Blobby. But then I got to thinking, you know what? It basically becomes a question of whether I want my Lego or whether you know I can keep my Lego and I deal with Mr. Blobby or I don't get to keep my Lego. And I thought, you know what? I would deal with Mr. Blobby at 12 a.m. He better be aware that I got all kinds of weapons. We got a katana here, we got a cutlass. There's all kinds of other things. So if he showed up, I definitely would be willing to basically defend my Lego and obviously defend myself. But uh, yeah, good question. And yeah, guys, check him out. If you're looking for something really creepy, it is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. And our last question comes to us from Chris and he asks, is a hot dog considered a sandwich and is cereal considered a soup? Okay, so very important questions. A hot dog, I would consider a sandwich. It's kind of like a long, a long sub, basically. And as far as cereal being a soup, I wouldn't consider cereal, cereal a soup just because, I don't know, it just seems so far from what it should be, like milk and cereal. Good question though. I could see how some people would think it was a soup, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with cereal is not a soup, but definitely a hot dog I would consider a strange sandwich. Uh, but anyways, that pretty well does all the questions for this uh, Q&A. Again, if you guys have questions for next uh, Ty's Talks, just leave them in the comments and we'll get to them then. And uh, yeah, guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing and click that bell so you're notified for any future Q&As we do. We do one of them basically every month and uh, they're a lot of fun. You guys ask, everything from the best Lego year to whether uh, whether cereal is considered a soup. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for you again. But thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.